Hi everyone, how are you? It is Dr. Emily, functional podiatrist and human movement specialist here to speak to you about the ASO brace. Now this is one of my favorite braces that I will recommend to my patients for very specific reasons. Now, if you're going to recommend or use the ASO brace, there's a few things that I want you to know. One is going to be that when you use an ASO, you want to get the ASO brand. I understand that sometimes all these different medical recommendations can start to add up, but you never want to go cheap or knock off when it comes to certain medical things. And an ASO brace is definitely one of those. So if you do very cheap and cheerful Amazon version, you are not going to get the same control of what I know you're going to get with an ASO. Now, some of the big conditions that I recommend to ASOs for is going to be, of course, ankle sprains is probably the most obvious, but this is one of my go-to post-tip tendinitis braces. It's really good for sinus tarsi syndrome, tarsal tunnel syndrome, really anything that is creating symptoms secondary to overpronation. So we are controlling either the eversion or inversion of the subtalar joint, which is really good. So medial ankle issues, post-tib, tarsal tunnel, flexor hallucis longus, any sometimes plantar fasciitis, sinus tarsi, like I said, any of those are going to be thinking post, or sorry, the ASO, and then anything laterally, maybe there's some perineal issues, maybe of snapping perineals, you just sprained your ankle, you can also think about the ASO, which leads me to my most important point, and that is how do I put the ASO on to get the best results? So I have this on, it can be a little bit cumbersome to put them on, but I'm just going to open it up so you can see how it, oh my goodness, that is quite the Velcro, and then how we are going to put this on. Okay, so your ASO is going to come with a, a part that's going to lace up. I'll tell my patients it's kind of like a corset. So you want to make sure that you're actually tying this really, really tight. So you want to get those laces nice and tight. If you want to avoid any sort of irritation as you put on the ASO, then wear a tall sock that will help you reduce that. You can see that my strings are really long. So actually I'm going to wrap those around the back of it and then that's where I'm going to tie it up. I want to have my foot in a neutral position. So my ankle is also going to be in that 90 degree. I don't want to put this on plantar flex because then when I stand up, it's not going to be in good alignment. So I want to make sure I keep my foot and ankle 90 degrees and then try to keep that neutral as much as I can. Now this comes to the most important part. So you can see these two straps that are part of it. Now the strap that you use first has to do with the condition that you have. So if I do my right strap, which is going to be the first one, what's going to happen is that as I cross it in front of my ankle, under the foot, and then I come up, I'm going to do this. So I don't know if you could appreciate that. I'll show it from this side. So the first strap that I did wrapped under my foot, and then I pulled it tight. Did you see that I pulled my foot into all of that eversion? So if I'm the patient and I have post-tip tendinitis, tarsal tunnel, sinus tarsi syndrome, any of these overpronation conditions, if I do the right strap first and I pull my foot tight into that eversion, I'm actually increasing my symptoms. So you always wanna make sure that you're using the correct strap for the correct condition. So I would, in the case of anything medial, post-tib, tarsal tunnel, etc., I want to start with my left strap. So I'm going to take the left strap, go around the front of the ankle, and this time I'm going to pull the foot into more of an inversion or a supination. Then I'm going to put that strap down. Then when I do the right one, I'm going to wrap it around and pretty much just place it. So the control and really where that, that moment is, is going to be based off of the condition. So let me just show that one more time. So I'm gonna undo this. Okay, so that was for our media. Let's say we have our lateral ankle sprain, snapping perineals, perineal tendinitis. I'm going to use the right one first, go around the ankle, 
And as I come around, now I'm gonna actually pull the foot a little bit into that E version so I can take that tension off of the lateral ankle. Then I'm gonna do the left strap and just kind of place that down. And then we have, of course, the thing that's gonna hold it down on top, okay? So again, big things when it comes to the ASO, and many of my patients don't even realize this, so I have to teach them how to put on that ASO. Step one, you wanna be lacing it up nice and tight, kind of like a corset. You got these two straps. You wanna really think about, am I trying to pull the foot into E version or inversion? You're going to use the strap that makes sense. Any medial ankle issues or medial foot issues, you're gonna start with the left one so that you can pull that foot into more of a supinated inverted position. Anything on the outside, you're gonna start with this one you're gonna wrap it around and pull that foot into a position that's gonna take tension and stress off the lateral. And then you'll place the other strap down, whichever that one is based off of the condition. And then you're gonna lock it in. Always use ASO brand and you wanna be nice and consistent, okay? Now these ASO braces are not intended to be used forever. They are a temporary immobilization to allow that tissue to time out. Now, if you're looking to learn more about functional foot conditioning or how I treat patients as a functional podiatrist, please go to dremilysplickle.com. Thank you so much.